Hey guys, it's Amy at Zoe Beck and I'm going to do my uh, year in review stats video of how I did my reading went this year uh, for 2018. So um, again, I do monthly stat videos. So um, they're, these are kind of the same questions. I've changed a few things only because this is the year year end when so I have different percentages for when you get to the end. I just I don't want to do some of these until the end. It's kind of been interesting and it actually makes me think of of why certain things happened that I didn't know about or why I made certain decisions reading. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know I did that. And, or in some things I need to uh, improve upon, which actually just right now I just thought, um, yeah, so it's all here. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I missed one. So we're just going to get through. I just have my little stat sheet. Um, again, <laughs> it's just the way I do this. Anyway. <laughs> So we'll just go into it. So um, how many books did I finish for the year? I technically finished 104 books that were either new to me or books that I reread that were over, it's been over 10 years since I read them. So the number comes up to 104. Um, how many of those were physical? 80 of those were physical. Uh, 15 were audiobooks and nine of them were ebooks. Yeah, like, yeah, that comes out right. <laughs> Some I was like, that, no, yeah, it does. It does. It comes up. Um, um, so rereads. This is I, I wanted to do this number because I saw um, some other people talking about this, and it, it, how many rereads did I have? And I haven't counted this before, but I did reread twenty one books this year. Um, eight of those were over ten years old. So eight of them I considered uh, books um, in my final number. But you know that that means that what does that mean? <laughs> That means like 13 of them were books that I'd read in the last 10 years and I reread. And yes, you'd be right to assume that most of those were Nalingi Singh books, <laughs> but not all of them. Some of them were other ones too, but yeah. <laughs> um, how many DNFs? Now this was actually surprising. I thought I had more. Now I do have a few outstanding books from last year that I have not decided if they were our, our DNFs yet. So I have about three of them that are sitting aside that I still want to get try one more time before I DNF. But at this moment, 10 DNFs is all I had last year. And I'm a little, I think there was a couple books that I picked up and read a little bit and then I just put down and I didn't count it because, and not, so I don't have record of it, of uh, reading that or trying it. But I did 10 books I definitely got pretty good into and then I DNF. So eh, I think that number is actually going to go higher. <laughs> in the next year. But I'll, it'll be interesting to see because I don't, um, I don't know. I, you know, I should have really watched my 2017 one. Anyway, I don't remember what happened last year. <laughs> anyway, we'll just go on. Um, so how many library books did I borrow? Of that 104, 26 of those were library books. And um, I did also borrow two books from my dad. I still have one outstanding from my mom I haven't read yet, but... Anyway, you know, I was kind of thinking my dad and I would have shared more books, but I think it's just, I read, I've only read the two. So I think I have one more of his on my shelf that I need to read too. So I have two outstanding, but, but I only borrowed two that I read from my dad this year. Um, how many books? Oh, okay. So here's here. I put this down just because this is, I have down how many books were still on my currently reading when we crossed over into the new year. And I showed seven. So again, there's those three books I talked about that are, I'm not sure they're going to be DNFs or not. And then I had two audio books, one that I was listening to at the time, one that I um, stopped because I was just, it was right after nonfiction November. I just wasn't ready for reading more. So that's five. And then I had two books. What was the other book? I thought there was one. <laughs> there must've been two books that I had started and I just, um... oh, I know Bleak House which I still need to get back to. Oh, I'm so behind on that read, <laughs> read along. Anyway, uh, and then I had the book that I was reading currently when the year changed. So that is seven. So, um, but again, some of those, like the audiobook that I'm not sure about, I might knock that back to want to read because I'm just not going to listen to it right now. And, uh, and those, again, those three I have to go through. So, I mean, it's not a, seven is kind of high number for me to have open, Except that I've put aside a couple of big books that I need to go back and finish. So, or decide if I'm going to DNF. So I guess that kind of makes sense. Sorry, I'm rambling here. Um, okay. So here, here's the number that hurts me, but it's awesome in another way because <laughs> they're all here. 
is how many books I bought this year. Now I don't have the exact number. I lost some of my records um, on a spreadsheet issue that I had. That was, it was my fault. It was nothing. <laughs> just, I did something, but I know for a fact that I bought 350 books this year. Okay, let's just think about that for a second. Some people have TBRs that are less than 100. <laughs> I bought 350 in a year. So, as you all know, this number freaked me out when I figured out how much money I'd spent. So again, as I said, my spreadsheet is a little off because I lost some of, J of January of last year. And I know I spent a lot of money in January. So, um, a lot of money because <laughs> I have a video that says that. Um, but the point is, is that um, this year I am not going to spend by that anywhere near that many amount of books. There's no reason to, because I got so many books this last year that are awesome. And I got a lot of books the year before in 2017 as well that I have not read. So you all know, I'm gonna probably have videos and videos about my book buying and reducing my TBR because my TBR is way outstanding. But just so you know, um, the 350 does not include eBooks and audiobooks. I know that he makes it even worse. It does. So I do have a problem. Anyway, so we're going to be working on that. That is, again, one of my New Year's, or not, it's just, I need to do it, and I'm going to go through it. So anyway, I just wanted to put it out there. I know that was a horrible number to say out loud. And yes, um, that's me coming from a place of privilege that I had money to spend on that, because that was my, most of that was my money, mostly my overtime money. <laughs> But some of it was not. Some of it was just my what I spend my money on. So this year I got things I got to save for. So I can't do that again this year. It was just insane, the number. I'm not going to say the number because it's just of how much, what I have. I'm just not going to. The number it was bad enough that how many books. Because not all those are new. Some of those are used. A lot of them are used. I mean, they're back and forth. Anyway, sorry. Let's pass the, I know that's the bad part. <laughs> Let's just... So I don't have any idea how many of those I read this year. And I did try to figure out, as I said, my spreadsheet did something weird where it was hard to tell um, some of the data. So I, I I corrupted it some, I don't know what I did. Anyway, so I'm again, as I said, these numbers are coming from what I knew it to be, but it's not accurate. Um, but as I said, I'm gonna go into a new book buying thing. I have a new spreadsheet started for this year. I'm gonna be very strict about what I buy and when and stuff, but. And be much better, I want to see which ones I actually do read this year that I buy this year. I want to see that number, how that works. So, okay, so let's get into the fun part. <laughs> now that I've gotten over that, that, that the pain of what I did last year. I mean, pain, beautiful pain. I mean, anyway, but I do need to calm it down. Anyway, so number of pages read for 2018 was 30,728 pages. So what that comes out to is an average of 84.18 pages a day. So to me, that is fantastic. I, again, my goal all the time for years has been to have a 50 page per day at, on average for the month. So to go all year and still and make that is awesome. I knew I had a lot of good months this year that were over 100 pages a day, but I had a couple months that were, you know, under like, 20 to 40, you know, like not very much. So it was really awesome to, my average is actually 84, which is great. I think that's a great number for me. Um, then I kind of looked at the, um, the Goodreads, um, <laughs> my year in pages, I finally, year in review or whatever, I finally found the page I was looking for. And it did that whole thing about what was my most, the most popular book that I read and the least least popular well the most popular book that I read this year was 1984 <laughs> which had over like 3.6 million you know reviews and you know and stuff so that was I mean that was pretty obvious you know um, my least popular was I totally I totally knew this was gonna happen was Older Gulch by Ernest Haycock and I knew that that was gonna happen because when I put my um, rating on there there was not very many yeah there's only 19 of us who have said we read it. <laughs> But everybody should be reading Ernest Haycock. Anyway, I'm going to be reading more of him this next year. But I still thought that was funny. And then it said the highest rated book that I read was Harlow in Hollywood, which I just read last week, which was that big book that was like gorgeous pictures of Jean Harlow and her years in Hollywood, talking about her life and death. And uh, it was just 
that was actually has a 4.75 rating. Now I gave it a four um, because it was really good. It just still didn't have enough. I wanted more, more. I always want more, but it was gorgeous anyway. And I can see why it has a high rating. But I, I was surprised that that was the highest rated book, you know, on Goodreads that I read. That was kind of weird. Um, and then of the numbers of pages that I read and how many books I read, it says the average number of pages per book averages out to 295. So that kind of makes some sense because I read a lot of short things this year, a couple of, a lot of novellas that um, I just had picked up along the way. And then I didn't read anywhere near as many big books as I normally do. And I, and again, as I said, I think this comes from the fact I didn't read as much epic fantasy this year as I expected. <laughs> which I'll get to my numbers here in a minute. But that was the one thing I knew going into this, into January is that I, I didn't read as much um, of those big books. And now I have a ton of huge classics and historical fiction that I've bought in the last couple months, uh, AKA a lot of the books that I bought anyway. And it's just like, I know that my, um, Maybe my number of books will go down, but I have a lot of big books that I want to get to this year. And again, they're all ones I'm excited about, of course, but I won't be able to read them all because I don't read as fast as I buy. <laughs> but um, I did want to say that 295 kind of surprised me because most of the books I read are over 300 pages, usually three into the 400s. Uh, and this year, just um, I've read a lot of short things and I didn't read as many over, like I only had two that were two or three that were actually over you know there's over 600 and i was kind of surprised i usually read a lot more than that anyway so um anyway we're gonna get into star ratings now so my my average star rating for all my books was 3.8 and that's incredible and i think it's because i do have a tendency to give fours to a lot of books um, my number is definitely higher in that range, but I also read a lot of good books this year that I would definitely call fours. And again, fours for me are books that I really, I really enjoyed and there's a potential to reread um, in the future. It's just a potential, not, not like obvious because five is for sure I'm going to reread that. And a three is usually I enjoyed it, but not enough that I'd reread it. Or, you know, and then a two is like, it's okay. Like it, I made it through the end. And then a one is when I just really get pissed off. And this year I did not have any one stars. There's not, there's a book that pissed me off that I put, a couple of them that I put into the twos, but they were good enough that I could get pissed off at them and still not lower them to a one. <laughs> they weren't, they were, they were bad to me, but not that bad. Like, as I said, I still made it through. So, um, as I said, I have zero one star reads. I have, I had seven two star reads. I had 30 three star reads. I had 45 four star reads and I had 22 five star reads. Um, so when you look at percentage wise, five stars is about 21%. So that's, I mean, that's pretty good. One in five books <laughs> I loved. So that's great. Um, four star books are about 43%. So, you know, that's, that's, that's a good average, I think. And then three stars was 28, 29%. Um, to get a three star, which makes kind of some sense to be the off from the fives because it's a lot of, a lot of them are okay. They're not as good as, as the others. And then again, the two, the little 6.7% is for the two percent, the two stars. So not, that's not, that's not bad. And again, my DNFs do not count in these numbers. When I DNF a book, I take it off my grid reads. I do not mark it as read unless I'm like within like a few pages at the end when I finally just give up. And I think only one book this year um, did that. And I think I put it as a two star because I did get far enough into it. I mean, I was almost in the end and it wasn't a big one. It was an epic fantasy that I didn't like. Anyway, so there were 12 genres that I, that I recorded here as what I read. Now, the only thing I didn't split up was my nonfiction and into its own separate groups. I kept it as its own here and I might change that going forward as I said, I'm not sure. I just, I, I usually think of history. I should have maybe split it up into history and and then other nonfiction, but I'm just gonna leave it as a full number because it's such a beautiful number. <laughs> I'll get to that in a second. So there, so I have 12 things here. So I have, um, I read seven classics, six modern classics, five historical, 
fictions, uh, two horrors, one western, five mysteries, um, three contemporary romances, uh, nine urban fantasies, ten science fiction, uh, eight literary fiction, eleven fantasy, and thirty-six non-fiction books. So, um, which is insane. I, I don't know if I've ever read that many books in one year. And again, my November was phenomenal for that. And then as I said, this December, I kind of kept with it for a little bit longer into nonfiction. It was really awesome. Anyway, so I, I, and I read nonfiction throughout the year, which in other years I used, I have not done that before. I'll go in little spurts, but I really read a lot this year. So 36 books were considered nonfiction. I think that's out of, out of 104, that is, that is 34.6%. That is amazing to me. I just was not even trying for that, but it was, it's really great. And I guess it's because I really, really rediscovered my love of nonfiction. And this number proves that, is that even though I did most of, I would say the bulk of that in, um, in November, I mean, that was only, what did I, I did 17 or so things, I think in, in November, but that means another, you know, almost, you know, 18, 19 I did throughout the year. And that's just, I think that's pretty good. Anyway, um, so my next highest is, is fantasy, which I read 11, which is only 10.5%. And the science fiction was uh, 10 at, with 9.6%. And everything else was smaller than that. And it's just like, that's why I'm trying to be more diverse, even though I love my nonfiction, don't get me wrong, that was a great number. But, um... I still feel like I, I need to diversify my reading a little bit more so that I'm hitting all the genres that I buy. <laughs> but still, the number is just awesome. I just, I think that was really great. Um, so I did want to also mention um, that the number, I read 14 books that were of translated works from other languages into English. So that was 13.4%. And that's pretty good. I think I would, I would like to see that number maybe a little higher, but really I'm still, I just did that with a couple read along readathons and uh, just picking up here and there what I like to read. So I, I thought that was, it's something to work on. Um, and then I like to do the, the male female percentage because I thought it was really interesting because I've always considered myself someone who reads pretty 50, 50 and I really actually did. And it was not on purpose. It's just, that's how I read. And so I have, I read 48 books by men. So that was 46.2%. And females, so I read 56 things, and that came out to 53.8%. So that was pretty cool. I was, um, you know, they're pretty close. I, I think that's, I figure that's good. If I'm doing, you know, I just, I just figure that's how I read, what kind of things I read. Um, I'm looking for the 50-50. I think that's just normal. I think it should, I mean, I think it, I want to keep it that way for now. If I read more females, that's great. But really, as I said, I, I really just want it to be, it's really close, 50-50 uh, for both. Um, it says my, so in my Goodreads thing, it said my longest book was The Mortal Tally at 688 pages. And then my shortest book was The Lady Astronaut of Mars, um, which was uh, 31 pages. So it's really pretty much a short story, but I counted it because I want to read um, Mary Robinette Quell's uh, books, uh, The Calculating Stars. <laughs> And I had to read the short story first. <laughs> oh well. So technically that was the shortest. I think that's part of the, one of my reasons why my average is so small. Because I read a couple small things. And that was the smallest thing that I marked. Um, and then um, just again, my percentage is from nonfiction to fiction. As I said, nonfiction was 34.6%. And fiction was 65.4%. So... Um, Again, I think this this year was kind of out of whack. I'm kind of surprised it's that so much nonfiction. I don't know if I'll be able to maintain that into the next year. I'm not really going to try. I think a you know 30% to me is really good. I did want to mention that I didn't realize this percentage when I did my best books of the year, you know, video and um <clears throat> or top 10 books of the year. Um actually my that shows that the, that I did do, I did four of the books on that top 10 were nonfiction. So it shows that I, I did actually read a lot because they all, those four books made my top 10. Um, so the percentage wise kind of makes sense, but um, it just, well, it makes sense to me anyway. But 
But um, as I said, I'd like to keep it close to 25 to 30% at least uh, for the year. If I can get close to 35 to 40% again, I would be surprised. I'm really surprised it made it almost 35% of nonfiction this year. And so we'll see what happens. But I'm not like, I need to read this many nonfiction a month. I'm just going to go with the flow, as I said. A nonfiction member always uh, tips the tail, to, to the scales because I read so much that month um, nonfiction because it helps with my writing not to be reading fiction at the same time. So we'll see how that goes. So, um, but I just thought that was just amazing. So um, I do want to very quickly just write, just give some little reading, uh, writing stats, just in case anybody of you care really quickly. Um, I do need to improve on writing more in the next year. And that's my goal is to go back to my manuscript that I read, wrote in November and start rewriting or deleting a lot of stuff and then restarting where I would need to start. But I did uh, write 111,505 words last year. So that was much better than the year before. And that comes out to about 405 words a day written. So that's about 9,292 words in a month, which is not, I would like to get closer to the 15,000 to 30,000 in a month, except for when NaNoWriMo happens, which is the 50,000. But all the other ones, I'd like to be closer to 15 to to 30 would be nice. But um, so I'm a little low on that, but I'm going to work on that anyway. So um, anyway, that's kind of it. Um, I do want to say, you know, I did show in my December, um, what do you call it? My December stats that I am doing one of those pixel things that shows daily how many, um, books I've read, um, with a little scale of, you know, how many I did per day, little black dots mean that was a reread day or I read, reread that during that day. Cause there's some within the boxes that you can see. Um, but I will be redoing this again for 2019. I'm hoping to make a whole journal, um, with a different notebook that, um, to make more stats and stuff and see how that works out. I'm not quite sure. I mean, I'm definitely going to still do the reading logs where I shows how many pages I did during the month and then, um, probably the yearly one too, just cause it's, it's interesting to see it in graph form and it's coloring and it's kind of something to kind of de-stress and stuff. So I'm hoping to do that. So that is all my stats for 2018. Oh my gosh. Like some of it was just awesome. Like some of the reading, I'm so thrilled about what I got to this year, but you know, the book buying is definitely something I need to work on. Um, as much as I love all the books and every day I think about buying more books, but I'm like, I don't read that fast. And really, um, I have so many books now. I, I don't need to buy for like eight or nine years. No, I don't actually. Yes, but we're not going to talk about that right now. We'll talk about that in a, another video. Um, once I have, uh, tried to <laughs> curb myself in January, we'll see how this goes. So, um, anyway, I hope your guys' uh, 2018, maybe not the world was all that great in 2018, but I hope your reading was really good. Uh, mine was, and I'm hoping 2019, of course, my numbers will be better, but we'll see what happens. A lot of books out there to read. So anyway, I hope you guys are doing well, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.